BP Ultimate Grid King Scott and Tim Edgel from the front row. John McIntyre and Craig Beard make up row number two. Then go back to the first GM person. That's Paul Manuel there. Next door to Martin Short. This is a station for the rookies in qualifying. Eddie Bow and then another Commodore of Andy Booth. Then we go back to Andy Knight and Wade Henshaw. Ninth and tenth on the grid. Eleventh and twelfth. Angus Fogg. There's one of the big stories. The championship leader alongside Matt Lockwood. Then go to Hayden McKenzie. Followed by next door a hard charge of Simon Richards. Scott McLaughlin. Next door to Nick Ross. Yeah, McLaughlin a little bit disappointed. Didn't get a good lap in qualifying. Willie Bamber will start from pit lane, but he was scheduled to start alongside Andrew Anderson. We go back to Christina Orr, David Hopper and John Penny. Rolling start, Kane Scott off the pole. Tim Edgell from two. John McIntyre from three. Craig Baird from four. Which side of the track would you want to be on rolling down into grid number, into turn number one? Outside. You outside, the outside, two, four, six, eight, ten, etc. Because then you've got a bit more room. Inside, nowhere to go once you get into that Constantine effect or the funneling effect of turn one. Lights are out, we're going, racing at Mighty Manfield. Four wide off the start, Andy oh. Knight's gone down the inside. This could get ugly down into one. Kane Scott's got the early jump as Knight gets back into line. But they're three wide, two deep going through turn number one. Yeah, look at that. Craig Beard on the outside of Timmy Edger. I think Timmy's going to live there. He'll just slot right in. Oh, oh Martin, Martin Short. Short. It's a tragedy. Such a strong qualifying position. It's a lot of damage to the front of that car. He's had a top five race car all weekend, and it's just come to nothing. Oh, Williams. Angus, Angus Bob. Bob We involved. spoke about it. There you go. That's turn, turn three, the sequence of splash. That's the championship leader there. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Well... Well, could that be the defining moment in this championship? Yes. That's Opening the lap incident. Hit. There's another one off in the background. It's one of the Penny cars. I think that's John Penny in the Penny Holmes Ford. Kane Scott leads. McIntyre's got shuffled back to fourth up the start. Paul Manuel. He's right there with Johnny Mack. Yeah, more importantly for that, Holden battle. Andy Booth, or Booth, as we call him, is right behind Paul Manuel. So he got a nice aggressive start there. But Angus Fogg, you can't see that car going. Bit of puff of smoke there from one of the Holdens. Probably nothing to that at all. Here we go. Here's the pick Andy for his replay. Shorts, Knight, oh, and that is a big, big hit, Jamie. Right in the rear corner, right to the tyres. Oh, it was just oh. an innocent party, and it's made contact with the tyre wall. Yeah, I made comment he had to survive turn one, and it's exactly what I was referring to right there. Just got collected by Martin Short, who was already sideways. It looked like he'd got a touch from behind. Here it so is. To be on board with Short. There's the clash with Foggy. Yeah, Andy Knight just slipping through there, so all the boys trying to adjust for position. It didn't work out the way they planned. Well, that's championship changing stuff. Advantage now to Craig Baird and certainly John McIntyre. How will it transpire at the end of this race? We've still got 10 laps to find out. Andy Knight with a big start down the inside. Could you believe that? Four wide off the start down in turn number one on the front straight? 100% can believe it. Been there, been part of it. Didn't particularly enjoy it myself when it was happening to and around me, so glad I'm on this side of the fence now, but that's the battle there now for the championship is essentially going to be between Craig Beard and Johnny McIntyre for the simple reason being is that Angus Fox going to start from the back of the next race. Yeah, so really up against it. He knew he wasn't happy after qualifying, knowing he would have to start in the middle of the grid. That's, as you've alluded to, Mark, where a lot of the action tends to happen. And he was just wrong place, absolutely wrong time. So Kane Scott, he's been pretty dominant all weekend. We've got double waved yellows down there at turn number one. So no passing down there, obviously. No, but where all of these guys, in particular the leaders, have got to be very careful. Um, Kane Scott and Tim Angel in particular, there's wave double yellow flags. And what that means, that means that there is extreme danger down there for one reason or another. Let's go back to the Angus Fogg reason. These guys, Jamie, are laughing at 1 minute 12.9. It means they're not slowing down for that flag. The officials will be honing in on that. These guys have to be careful. They've got to make some attempt to slow down for that corner. I've not seen it. Well, they're right on that record pace of 112.810, held by Angus Fogg, set there in 2008. Now, Foggy, has he extracted himself? No, he's gone off again. That is out of the final corner, Dunlop, and he's going to go into the pit lane. There's no other option. You see all the debris and everything. That's going to become a factor as well because these guys are going to be going through all the debris left behind right about right now. So Foggy's obviously gone off trying to get back to the pits. Yeah, unless he had a flat tyre and decided to drive all the way around in the grass, which they do just to help get the cars back. Here's old Boothy sitting. he got his race face on. Andy Knight just in front of him. Wade Henshaw in the background doing a sterling job there. Well, as you heard from Henshaw, they replaced a dud shock overnight from qualifying. It was certainly a spectacular qualifying lap. There's Boothy down the inside of Andy Knight for the 
Sixth position, is he running in a little bit too deep? Knight's gonna try and cross him over off the exit. Should have the line all oh. leaning on each other. They're still side by side. No, Boothy gets it. Here comes Wade Henshaw. <laughs> you just knew from going back from the old days that if Henshaw had a glimpse of ray or sunlight, he was going to take it. That's exactly what we saw. He's lost another spot. I think that's Matt Lockwood. Matt Lockwood down the inside. Making his first start for the new championship in one of John Penny's holdings. That's a very quick car. And Matt's actually been pretty solid right throughout the weekend. So there's... Uh, the LG team going to work on the left front corner of Fogg's machine as Lockwood's going down the inside of Andy Knight. Knight carrying some damage to the left side of the Century Battery Sport. He was involved in that skirmish with Martin Short and Angus Fogg as well. Right. Be interesting to see if Martin Short got some assistance from behind that unsettled the car, got it sideways and just turned it right, right into the path of Angus Fogg. Yeah, there's a bit of an investigation going on in the other car that's been called up and had a 69 of Eddie Bow and I noticed that Andy Knight's number wasn't called up so maybe he was just an innocent party but the guys in the uh, judicial camera, they'll go and have a look and decide who was at fault with anybody at all if it was in a race incident but this battle is not over. These guys are going to be taking it to each other here, Andy Knight and, and the Lockwood car till the end. Here you go. Positions reversed. And here comes a drag race. Matt Lockwood, a former Mazda Pro 7s champion and a former NZV8 new champion, of course. But he has shown some pretty good pace this weekend. He's done a very, very solid job. Stayed out of trouble, which is the main thing. Andy Knight trying to get back around Matt Lockwood. I think he's done enough to get up the inside of turn one. Can he make it stick to the S's? I think these guys are kind of going to come unstuck here myself. Pretty close quarters racing. Ford versus Holden. Andy Knight was a little bit disappointed with their ninth qualifying effort. The Century Ford, certainly working over Matt Lockwood. Battles further back, there's Anderson McLaughlin, now up into the 10th position from grid 16. Can he get around Andy Anderson and get to that ninth position? They talking to Scott, they were pretty happy with their race balance. They just again disappointed with that qualifying effort, but he's working his way through the field. Oh, good steady progress, which is always important because keep in mind, every time he goes to a track in New Zealand, it's the first time he's ever been there. So look for him to be in 10th place in itself is a credible effort, but we know this team was capable of more and unfortunately got caught out in qualifying. Not what you can do about that, but the cars in front using every inch of road plus a bit more. Witness of that is by all the debris getting thrown into the air. Someone's dropped the wheel off the exit of Dunlop, the final corner here at Mighty Manfield. McLaughlin spent a fair bit of time testing with Kane Scott, and they made some pretty big gains with this race car. So he's looking forward to Talpo because it's the first track that will actually go back, and have done, he's already done some laps on this season. He should have a competitive showing if that's the case, because, yeah, you're right, during the week they snuck down there on the way down to Manfield and done a few miles, which obviously Kane is uh, getting rewarded for. Johnny McIntyre's car is actually slowing. Here's the fastest race lap times. Kane Scott with the fastest lap of the race at 1.12.9, and he's got three of the top five laps. Tim Yedgel, again, pace-wise, he's in second place. He's obviously not got a bad race car, but really nothing for Kane Scott right now. It just looks to be just about having the arm out the window for a Sunday yeah, look, drive. Sorry, sorry, Jamie, to butt in there. Johnny McIntyre has actually fallen behind Andy Booth and is going to come under the tension very quickly of Wade Henshaw. He's on off. Board. We're on board with John McIntyre. He is off. Well, and smoke coming out of the left front tyre there. Actually, what has to get... happened to John McIntyre? So Booth and Henshaw have already gone by well, him. Has he punctured a tyre? Maybe the right front or is... No, no, something's broken at the rear of the race car. Yeah, it almost, to be honest, it actually almost looked like the engine seized up. It wouldn't be the case at all, but... Look to be dragging something down that maybe that drive is shaft, similar to yeah. Craig... It's either a drive shaft or maybe that what's linkage that uh, caught Craig Baird out at Timaru. You're right, because the, the previous lap he dropped a second and a half to the leaders. So, here we go. Scott McLaughlin on the inside. Going to be a drag race here between the two Holdens. Andy Anderson's got an inside run. So first Looks and third. Like a rocket going down the inside of Scott McLaughlin. First and third in the championship, having dramas in race one here in Manfield. Battles raging uh, safety right cars through out, the field. We've got a safety car called. Well, this is going to close things up with just a couple of laps left to go. It's going to be a sprint to the finish. Well, hasn't this championship changed, Mark Peterson? Well, it has, but these guys, I don't think, have been informed that the safety car's out because they're still racing here. There we go. We flip to the left. The flag marshal's doing a good job, waving all the flags they can, so the notification would have come out. But, wow, that's how you turn the championship upside down in the blink of an eye, isn't it?
So John McIntyre parked off ah, the exit. Sorry, Joe, you see right in the centre there, you'll see the scuff marks. I think you hit the nail on the head. Maybe it's broken a drive shaft, and that's what's been digging into the track. One, two bits of dirt in the car. So there's Kane Scott, your race leader. We might have a one-lap dash to the chequered flag here. The AMG Mercedes safety car is out on track. Let's look Let's underneath the car, this. I can't see anything. This is the peak antifreeze replay of John McIntyre's problem. So something's let go there. Definitely the rear of the car is sitting down now. Let's have a look under the back of the oh, car. Oh, there you go. Suspension. Yeah, definitely, definitely in the back part of the car. So whatever it is, this could be championship turning results. So John McIntyre, disappointment for him, disappointment for Angus Fogg. First and third in the points, having their issues in race one here at Manfield. So the red flag is out. Kane Scott looking to take the victory. The race has been declared with John McIntyre stranded off the edge of the racetrack. This championship has just got absolutely turned on its head. Kane Scott with the victory from Tim Edgell and Craig Beard. Craig Beard, the new championship leader with the demise of Angus Fogg and John McIntyre in this first race. Well, what a first race for the BNC V8s from Manfield. A red flag bringing out an early finish with Kane Scott taking the victory. Tim Edgell in third, Craig Beard fourth, followed by Andy Booth, Wade Henshaw and Andy Knight. Problems for first and third in the points. Angus Fogg with some crash damage from an early lap crash. And John McIntyre with a very, very costly DNF.